And very quickly, before uh, we get to the news at the top of the hour, having Mizzou pushed everything back, so we're going to briefly introduce our guest. This is James, of course, from geek to me Radio, and we are joined by some friends who you probably remember from a few months back we had them on, from Superheroines Etc. It's a dot .org. We are joined by Carolyn No and Fox Smith. Ladies, thank you for coming in. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. And talking Project Comic Con. Yes. Um, that is October the 17th and 18th, I believe? Yes, Saturday and Sunday the 17th and 18th. And that's right here in Westport Plaza, just uh, across the way here in the Sheraton Chalet, I believe. Yes. So if you're uh, in the Westport area, or in the St. Louis area, or we had people from Illinois coming in uh, last, uh, a couple years ago when it was the last one coming in, but they've got a lot of fantastic mm-hmm. guests lined up for this one. Who are some of the... Uh, uh, guest right off the top there. Um, well, Trina Robbins is going to be there, as well as Alex DeCampi, Joel Jones, um, Rory, who's actually a local who does a webcomic, and um, just a lot of really interesting things that I can explain more when we start getting into the panels and such. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, we'll, we'll be talking a little bit more than this because we were truncated by the game, as I mentioned. So we will be coming back and talking a little bit more of that at the top of the hour after the news and I know that uh, this morning I wanted to mention uh, thank you to BK on the Air out of Atlanta, Georgia. They are on 1450 AM and 100.3 FM WBHF. They were kind enough to have me on. We talked about the movie The Visit that I reviewed on. Uh, you go to geekedmeradio.com and check that out, the review of The Visit. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, M. Night Shyamalan came back pretty strong. This is some of his older, are, are either of you fans is this, of... Well, I... I'm not not a fan. Okay. <laughs> I just I take it film by film. Was this the one that had the uh, trailer that had kind of a grandma's house thing going on? Yeah. So basically, okay. yeah, the the general gist of the story is uh, a woman who has not seen her parents in 20 years because of a fight they had, a falling out. Um, she has two children now, and the grandparents want to see the children. So she is sending them off for a week at grandma's house, and her daughter is kind of doing a documentary-style film about the family, so she's excited to go see Grandma and Grandpa and get their input. When they get there, it's all shot kind of documentary-style. Mm. Um, I don't want to say Blair Witch, because that's going to give the wrong vibe, but it is kind of that. It's not a found footage thing, but it is a documentary-style from the point of view of their cameras a lot of times. Mm. And as they're shooting this, they notice something's not quite right with Grandma and Grandpa. They're acting a little strange. I don't want to ruin the twist for you, because it was one of those that I didn't quite expect which is kind of like the sixth sense and unbreakable in that event. Um, but, yeah, the, the happening and the village kind of turned me off to M. Night Shyamalan's work. So. And I, I, might I mention also Avatar? <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. No, yeah. The last Airbender, I think, was his, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that's, <laughs> but, yeah, this is hopefully going to be his comeback because it was really good. Um, if you haven't seen The Visit, you can go check it out. And, obviously, geek2meradio.com has the review up there. And make sure, again... Check mm-hmm. out superheroinsetcetera.org, and you can also sign up for the last three slots of their screenwriting. Is it a class? How would you? Uh, it's a four-week workshop. So the workshop three-hour classes on Sunday afternoons for the next four weeks. Perfect. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. We'll be talking more with our friends from Superheroines Etc. in top of the hour, right after the news. So make sure you stick around, and we'll be talking more geek stuff as well. We'll get some Bill on the Road segments in. Next hour as Bill is uh, out of town and leaving early tomorrow morning. This is the Big 550 KTRS St. Louis. All right, St. Louis. Bill Cleveland, as we mentioned last, I want to say hour, but it was really only 10 minutes, um, (laughs) is getting ready to gear up for another one of his on-the-road adventures. So he is not in studio. This is James, and I'm joined, as we mentioned last hour, by our friends from Superheroines, etc. So we'll be talking uh, geek stuff and Excellent. talking about Project Comic Con and all that kind of good stuff as well. So we dove in a little bit uh, the beginning, or I guess the end of last hour technically, about the Project Comic Con event. Yes. And so you are you're doing four panels, I think you said? Uh, yeah, we are doing four panels. We have a documentary screening and a very exciting cosplay fashion show. And that's uh, for charity, you said? It is. It's more specifically for us. Yeah. Oh, for, because we you're a nonprofit a or Sure, we, absolutely. We are the yeah. charity. It is right. a charity. So what all is that going to entail? Kind of walk us through what all that will be. 
Well, um, the anyone who is going to be attending Project Comic Con can register on the site. Um, we have created an event right that people can register to be participants. And um, we are going to categorize, you know, cosplayers by it, whether they're dressed like a video game character or a comic book character. And we are going to walk them down the runway to strut their stuff. Hmm. And so the registration fee and then uh, are there just a panel of judges or is it audience votes? Or um, how it's is... it's actually not a contest. We, oh. uh, we want to show love to everyone and let everyone have their moment to gotcha. go up and down and just love on them without judging them. That's very fair. <laughs> Empowerment very nice. to the cosplayers. Good, good, good. And have you already had people sign up for that, or is it going to be kind of a registration on the day of? And... Um, registration has just opened. Okay. Um, we just got that done. And the very exciting thing about that is that there is no fee to participate. There is, in fact, the opposite. And if you register, you will get a discount code for your tickets to the actual con. Oh. So they so... can register on the Project Comic Con website or through Superheroines, et cetera, dot org? Um, we will have the registration up through us. Right now, it's most primarily going to be through um, the Project Comic Con site. Okay, gotcha. Thanks. And then there will be tickets for sale for the actual uh, attending the, yes. the fashion show. And uh, those will be $5 or $10. And $10 is going to get you a VIP ticket. So that is going to be your front row seat mm -hmm. as well as uh, some swag bags. Nice. Yeah. Full of very fun, exciting treasures. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. That sounds exciting. And you mentioned the documentary also earlier, Wonder Women. Yes. Which will be screening at the uh, Comic Con. What, uh, what were you saying about that? What's all? Um, well, it's going to be really neat. We're actually partnering with the St. Louis County Library. Um, and the screening for this documentary is actually going to take place after the close of the con floor, um, which will allow it to be open to the public. Okay. So we can have, you know... Participants from the con be there, but also people can come and kind of get a flavor of what's going on. It's going to be really exciting. Um, the documentary itself is called Wonder Women, which follows the history of the character Wonder Woman, um, her creation, kind of the trajectory she took uh, alongside of the development of women's rights and just how she reflected that, what was going on with society at the time. And is this premiering at Comic-Con here then? Oh, no. It's actually been out for quite a while, but we're really lucky in that one of the special guests that will be at Project Comic Con has, uh, was actually featured in the film. Nice. Mm -hmm. And which, which guest? I know you mentioned the name. I've uh, Trina Robbins. Trina Robbins. Okay. Very neat. And you said she's done a lot of uh, both writing and comic book uh Yeah, she's work. been involved in creating comics for 30 plus years. Uh, she calls herself a historian, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> Very neat. And then I guess it'll be available for sale if people want to uh, buy it as well while they're there? It's not actually available for sale. Um, it's primarily, it was, I think, developed by PBS. Um, I think that's right. Um, it, it's, it, was primary, it was developed as like a documentary, I think, for PBS, or basically for showing. Okay. And so um, An educational It may be situations. available on DVD. I, we won't be selling it. We're actually uh, like leasing the rights to oh, gotcha. getting a license to show it. Okay. But it yeah. will be a grand time, and you will love it every yeah. moment. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I just completed an EDX course through the Smithsonian. Oh, um, yeah. And they had, it was all about the rise of superheroes and the mm. pop culture genre. And they did focus on, you know, the golden age when Wonder Woman came about mm -hmm. and what that had done. So this is going to be even more of a focus on Wonder Woman specifically, which I think will be fascinating to see, especially in the mm -hmm. context in which you're describing it. So that'll be really cool. Well, and it's, uh, you know, before, because I actually had seen the documentary. Um, they showed it at the History Museum mm -hmm. a couple of years ago or something like this. Um, and I, I never had actually been that interested in Wonder Woman before, but it, it gave me a new appreciation for her. Like, when she first came out, she was actually very uh, edgy for women oh, in yeah, society definitely. at the time. You know, she was doing a lot of saving of people, mm -hmm. men and women alike. And, like, I, I think there were situations where ladies were, like, falling in love with her and just really powerful character. And then she became a fashion designer. Yeah, I think <laughs> for, in the course I was time. talking, they said in the 50s, because one, when we were at war, she was, you know, fighting right alongside of them. Mm -hmm. And in, in the 50s, when all the men came back from war, well, it was kind of they. she was kind of like the JSA's secretary. Mm -hmm. And keeping notes, right. and she wasn't so. It's kind of it, it just the way things trended with culture. It's very interesting to see mm -hmm. that juxtaposition and how that happened in comic books. You know, kept pace with what was going on in the actual world. So, I, I take it the documentary goes all the way through the modern era Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So they interview uh, 
contemporary comic creators as well and and what influence what the Wonder Woman series had on on them as Yeah, the, the and, TV series from oh, was yes. that the 80s. Linda Carter, I think it was the 70s actually, late, yeah. late 70s, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, my uh, my brother watched that all the time. I was a little too young, but it was uh yeah, you look back on that now and it's kind of weird to see cuz <laughs> with the way they do superheroes now is completely different from the 60s Batman show and the 70s Love Wonder that, Woman though. series. That was so good. There, there's the, definitely oh, a the charm. Adam West Batman was yeah. just amazing. Yeah, and the 50s uh, with George Reeves as Superman. You know, you can't. You, mm-hmm. It's something they'll never be able to reduplicate. It's kind of that nostalgic magic to it. Yeah, and there's something really wonderful about the amount of cheese that's in those those older shows. You know, I think we've lost a little bit of that with the trend mm-hmm. toward the grit and the the real more realistic. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Christian Bale approach to. Uh, to the superheroes like he did with Batman and Christopher Nolan and everything like that did. Mm-hmm. The, uh, yeah, the 60s, some of those, we actually talked about the 60s Batman series on the air here several months ago, but all the stars who they had come through as guest villains on that show. Mm-hmm. Just just watching it for that reason alone was very neat. Vincent Price, uh, Carolyn Jones, uh, a lot of, lot of big-name stars were on the show at the time as just guest roles. Well, and like the Joker, what was it, C- Cesar, Cesar Romero? Cesar Romero, yeah. He, and I'm, I'm sure people who watch would notice this, like, he was known as an actor for having this mustache, so he didn't want to cut it off. So he actually painted his mustache white and, like, <laughs> stuck it to his face. So like, it, And it made him look a little more bizarre, but I just yeah. found that to be really interesting. Kind of creepy, but yeah, that was his trademark. He wouldn't get rid of his mustache, so they just if but they look really, really close. But they really they him. Painted just, over. Painted awesome. his mustache white. Yeah. <laughs> very, very bizarre, very creepy, too, if you really get a close look at some of the close-ups of the Joker's face. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, was, it was weird. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely a nostalgic charm to well, those I, shows. I think it's really interesting. I heard, um, and I'm going to bring in a little something I heard about the old Star Trek okay. <laughs> versus the new one. But it it was really interesting to me. And I somebody out there will probably know this, but I don't remember who was talking about this. Um, but they were saying the interesting thing about the new, what was it, J.J. Abrams? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the new, new Star, Star Trek, Trek, yeah. Um, making it grittier and more just hard hitting and punchy and stuff like this. Um, somebody had said, and I think I, it, I believe it might've been somebody who worked with the old show, but um, was talking about how the old, the older shows, um, you know, next generation, the original series had this sense of wonderment about like the exploration of space, right. about this, this sense of just looking toward the future. And there's, there's a bright future ahead. And it, and with the new movie, they kind of killed that a little bit. You know, you look at it and you're like, well, everything's bleak. <laughs> We're all yeah, going to die. That's a great point, actually. Yeah, everything's kind of like, oh, this is our future. <laughs> Good <Right>. luck. <laughs> and, there, and there was less of a focus on the actual exploration of space and mm-hmm. more on the personal stories mm-hmm. of the characters, which can be good, but you do lose that sense of wonder. And we're still exploring space, and it, mm-hmm. it's, it's sad that these films aren't focusing on what could be out there. Even the next generation with uh, Picard and Riker had that still, you know, they were still exploring and meeting new creatures and everything like that. Well, and it's through the exploration that they learned about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm actually in the middle of season one of Voyager, which I'd never actually watched before, but it's on Netflix. How great is Netflix? Oh, man. So I'm watching uh, Voyager now going, oh, this is so cool. I didn't realize, you know, that this, Mm -hmm. I think that was about when I stopped watching Star Trek stuff. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, but this is uh, this is good. Now I'll go back and do DS Nine next, which is another one I never. Uh, you never. Oh no, <laughs> I heard I, it's good. it was it was one of my favorites. Yeah, it's, it's more drama driven because it's not you know out and about with the ship mm-hmm. moving around. Everything's stationary, so it was much more dramatic as a series. Well, and kind of the end, it, it almost turns into like Band of Brothers in space a little. Mm. Bit. You know, it, it turns into more about this war that's going on and kind of the uh, impact that that has on the people there on. You know the different cultures that are convening there. It's it's very interesting. I found it. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Yeah, they, Gene Gene Roddenberry knew what he was doing. Yeah, <laughs> obviously yeah. spun it off into what five franchises. Yeah, off the original. So we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more with our friends from Superheroes Etc. dot org. And we want to mention the nice weather today. Beautiful day to get your car washed. If you had the chance, hopefully you went to Waterway Car Wash with locations all over the St. Louis area. Bill is a big fan he always goes when he gets back he doesn't go when he leaves but when he gets back from all this traveling he takes his car to waterway they do a great job and he always has to take a picture of his car <laughs> always does it we, we think it's a little weird but you know it's just one of his things he does uh so if you go to waterway car wash i know with you know taking the kids to college and everything like that you might be driving your car fairly good distance want to come back and get it cleaned up waterway they've got different packages with all sorts of different price ranges 
and they will always do an excellent job, make your car look brand new inside and out. Check them out. Waterway Car Wash. Get your car looking brand new. We'll be back right after these messages. This is the Big 550 KTRS. And we're just very briefly going to come back because the uh, Mizzou football game backed us up on spots. We're going to try to knock some more of these commercials out. If you'd like to uh, call in and request your favorite commercial, give us a call at 314-969-KTRS. Or if you're outside the St. Louis listening area, streaming us online, 888-550-KTRS. We have a uh, fax here from John in St. Peter's wants to hear that select quote spot. So, John, we'll get to that right in the next break here. But first, we had a text inquiry. And this is, I'm going to direct this one to Carolyn. Marge from Florissant wants to know, where are those writing workshops held? What do they cover? And what's the price? The writing workshops will be held at the Novel Neighbor, which is right on... uh, Big Bend, kind of right by the Murdoch Cutoff um, in Webster Groves. Okay. Super cool shop. Yeah, it's really cool. If you like those adult coloring books, you, oh, yeah. you want to... Those are huge. Yeah, you want to run in there and get like every single one that they have. <laughs> um, they are $20 for the entire four-week course. So you are not paying $20 wow. per class. You're paying for the whole thing, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, no kidding. Um, we got a really awesome grant from the Missouri Humanities Council, which helped us out with that. And then... The other question was, what does it cover? Um, What you're really going to be doing is learning from uh, an MFA student from Columbia who will be going over sort of basic structure, how to build your protagonist, um, and you'll be building a 10-minute piece uh, that could be produced as like a web video or uh, something that you're going to turn into a longer piece later on. So you're really just getting the foundation. Fantastic. All right. Sounds, yeah. So there's a lot there for uh, only 20 bucks. That's amazing. Pretty much create an award winning series and it pays for itself. Right. And then the royalties you'll get off that, you'll never have to work again. Let's be serious. (laughs) So you can check out, and I think there's three slots remaining. So check it out, superheroines, et cetera.org. We're going to go ahead and get back to these commercials that we know you want to hear. Bob in Festus wanted to hear Rosetta Stone spot. So, Bob, this one's for you. And we are back on the Big 550 KTRS chatting with Carolyn. And Fox from Superheroines, etc. And we were just talking uh, off the air about Comic-Con, obviously with Project Comic-Con coming up next month right here at Westport. We were discussing guests and things like that. And mm-hmm. 1,200 people at the, not this, obviously they didn't have one last year, but the year before, 1,200 mm-hmm. people, which for the kind of con this is, that's a really good draw. It is. It is. And it's. The setup is really nice. We were actually talking about the difference between Project Comic-Con and some larger ones. And it's it's not warehousey in feel if if that makes any sense like it's it's a good size floor there are a lot of uh booths there are a lot of guests there are a lot of creators and things of that nature um but it doesn't feel like you're gonna get overwhelmed and lost like it feels like you can talk to everybody you know yeah. it feels it feels almost more of like a community it's it's very warm i think is a yeah. good, uh, very yeah. warm and uh, i think carolyn used the word intimate Right. Uh, mm-hmm. For that kind of a setting, it is. It's very nice. It's cozy, mm-hmm. um, but it's definitely worth checking out. I had a great time two years ago when they had it last time. George Perez, as I mentioned, was there. Uh, very nice. He was just people were bringing him stacks of comic books, like fifty, sixty, and he's just <laughs> cheerfully signing each one. Oh, I remember doing this one, and you know, great guy. Uh, they've got a lot of very talented people coming this year, and the spotlight for mm-hmm. this. One is women in comics, yes? It is, it is. And that's why we ended up being such a perfect fit. We are actually going to be their featured nonprofit this year. Nice. Um, so it's it's going to be really exciting. So we are having many opportunities to do different events, uh, like the fashion show and the screening, as well as uh, several different panels we're putting together. So, And if you want to check it out, they do have the website for it, projectcomiccon.com. They've got uh, little tabs if you want to pre-purchase tickets. They've got info on the hotel if you're staying slightly outside of the Westport, St. Louis area. Uh, you can grab a room there. They have an events list. They have who's going to be on Artist Alley and, of course, the after party info as well. You can check that out, projectcomiccon.com. And obviously learn more about our friends here at superheroinesetc.org. So describe some of the challenges. We, cause we Again, we were talking a little bit off the air about being a nonprofit. Um, it sounds like you do a fine job managing everything between, you know, the getting the people to come in for these many events you've got. We talked about there's a graphic novel book club you have yeah, and all sorts of things. So, I mean, it, any any major hurdles 
that you've well, becoming a nonprofit <laughs> is a huge thing. Sure. Um, it used to take a really long time. Um, and a lot of people would say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that because it's just such a struggle. Um, the They've changed some things and it's really not as difficult as it used to be. Um, so that was our biggest, our biggest hurdle. Since then, it's really about um, kind of maintaining our volunteer base, uh, especially with the fact that we do about 10 events a month mm-hmm. now. Uh, we have a really active event host uh, group that will do events. So it's not always myself or Fox or (laughs) any number of our board members at every single event. That would be 120 events. That'd be amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So that's been really helpful is to have uh, some of our members become these event hosts and and help volunteer. Um, I don't know. What what would you say, Fox? Yeah, I mean, I... It's interesting because a lot of our events are member generated. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody could come to us and be like, hey, you know, um, we want to do a learning game night. And so we start doing learning game nights and, and people want to become event hosts, which is really exciting. Um, and I think keeping people really engaged is a big thing. But I, I honestly, the the whole thing about becoming a nonprofit, we have to put props to our wonderful <laughs> president who completely <laughs> went above and beyond in making that happen. <laughs> Carolyn, that's you. <laughs> um But it's every time we've been out to various different events where we'll have an exhibitor table and people come around and we tell them about the organization, people are really excited about it. Um, I mean, there's been so much going on lately, kind of showcasing Mm -hmm. maybe not so friendly gender things going on in the geek community, Um, Mm. you know, and online, the way women are treated sometimes, um, or not even just women, but the way anybody's treated online, Um, you know, and it's it's. I think really timely with a lot of things happening and and people get ladies especially get really excited that there's a local group that that is you know our our mission is to empower women to embrace their inner nerd and that's really exciting and i i would say i i I guess obviously because they've had the characters and everything women have always been interested in comics but it's kind of like as a guy when i was in junior high you don't want to let anyone know because you're trying to be cool (laughs) but i i think it's it's becoming so mainstream i'm not sure if i notice more women in it because it's becoming more mainstream or it's because comic books have opened themselves up now and they're trying to attract more female. I'm not sure which came first. I think you'd be really surprised how many Mm -hmm. women have been involved in the geek community. I mean, some of the earliest Trekkies were women. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think a lot of times people think, oh, you know, being a geek or being a nerd, it's a certain type of person. It's a it's a certain persona that we assign to to help us understand the world, essentially. Uh, and it's really not. There's so many people who are in the geek community. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've said to just people out in the community, oh, we're super heroines, et cetera. And before that, we were called the nerdy girls. And I would say, oh, I'm a nerdy girl. And they'd look at me and say, well, you don't look like a nerd. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. <laughs> what is, how do you respond to that? Mm-hmm. Right. And so people have this misconception that there there is a certain type of person who mm-hmm. is a nerd or a geek. But really, women have been in the community for so long. And it, it belongs to both men and women. Sure. They are all equally geeky. Well, and the idea, too, that I, th- I think there's a lot of times certain parts of the geek community, people have been with people for a long time. And they went through school maybe, you know not really interfacing with other kids in the same Mm -hmm. kind of way. And, you know, so you get to a certain point, you're like, well, this is my thing. This is, this is a cool thing. This is my thing. When realistically, you know, even when other people are coming into it who may not know a lot about it, like that's, that's another opportunity to share what you love with someone else, you know, to get more people interested. And the more people that are interested, the more games we have that we like, the more movies we have that we like, you know, I mean, it's, it's good to have more people be in the boat. Yeah. And yeah, hopefully we, women shouldn't be excluded from it at all because, like you said, it's it's for everybody. I think Marissa last time she was in used the term mansplaining, oh, yeah. which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> that was a nice term, but yeah. uh, for for you know she's been in a comic book store before. She said, mm-hmm. and the guy's like, "Ugh, you don't know what this is," you know, and that's that's mm-hmm. not going to help anybody want to get into comic books or want to read comic books. So it's definitely something that has to be kept open. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, I, I I think for a long time. A lot of women, because I'm I'm primarily a gamer, is my my niche there. But um, I think a lot of times, especially in games, you'll find that women aren't really eager to make themselves known as women. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually read a statistic recently that apparently 
PC games right now, the majority of players are women. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. For, for mostly, not for uh, first-person shooters, but for, uh, like, RPGs and things like that. World of Warcraft. Stuff like uh, perhaps. Yeah. I miss World of Warcraft. Yeah, I'm a big <laughs> simmer, and there are a lot of ladies in the sim community, and it's hmm. pretty awesome. Hmm. You know, and, and I think the idea is to make it a place where you can be a woman and be and come out and be like, yes, I'm a lady that, that does this. You know, I mean, personally have every Nintendo system whenever it first came out, <laughs> you know, and yeah, and, it, you know, and make it a comfortable place for people to show up as who they are and be able to be accepted and to experience things and enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that I love so much about being a nerd is I'm never ashamed to share the thing that I'm excited about. Uh, like over the break, we were talking a little bit about a show that I had just found on sci-fi yeah. called Ascension. Uh, my fiance had introduced me to it. And as soon as I watched the first episode, I was totally geeking out about it and <laughs> writing things on Facebook and <laughs> telling all of my friends about it. So, you know, and, and within the nerd community, people are excited to hear about it mm-hmm. and will want to go out and find that show, watch it and and, and engage and I never feel like I have to be like, oh, well, you haven't watched that. Well, oh, my goodness, you're just not nerdy enough or you just don't know enough. Um, whereas I think a lot of women, when they're interacting in their, the nerd community in general, get that from from men who think that they have ownership over right. whatever that is, whether that's Star Wars or Star Trek or, you know, uh, comic book characters. And I think that really keeps women from wanting to learn more and wanting to engage more. And I think that you can have different levels of liking something, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, like sure. maybe Absolutely. I only like to watch the Avengers movies and I don't want to go out and read all the comics because I'm spending. Oh, uh, I'm my sorry. Time... Carolyn's going to have to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but I want to nerd out about Firefly and I'll get all the comics related to Firefly because that's my jam, you know? Sure. But I can like all of those things and not like them as deeply as you like them. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, there's... hey, man, there's only so many, so many hours in the day. You know, <laughs> exactly. You yeah. Right. You're preaching to the horse's mouth here, um, which didn't make sense <laughs> now that I said it out loud. But yeah, I know there's a huge uproar. I keep seeing, you know, all the different postings on Facebook. People are upset because Thor and Wolverine are now women. And Wolverine's a woman. Yeah. Uh, his daughter X23 has taken over. Now they had the death of Wolverine. Oh. So now yeah. she is the new Wolverine. I heard that the Thor comics are Thor. selling like crazy right yeah, now. Yeah, Batgirl is doing rather well too, and they've really done you know changed Batgirl dramatically. Well, Miss even... Marvel too, even. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, Miss Marvel's awesome. Yeah, and like, actually, I... ABC is looking at developing a Miss Marvel series based <gasps> oh. on the Kamala Khan <gasps> uh, character. So, be so awesome. that would be that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, in many ways. And, and we've got the Supergirl show coming out as well. Right. So there's definitely a lot more um, representation of women mm-hmm. that we're seeing. In television, in movies, in comics, um, you know, obviously we'd like to see more. We'd like to see more diversity, uh, and we'd like to see it represent all of us who are in this community. You mm-hmm. know, we're mm-hmm. not all just men, right? You know? right. White, <laughs> white, straight all, men. Yeah. yeah, we don't all look a certain way, and it would be really wonderful to see someone who looks like me in a comic, a movie, a TV show. Yeah. I just uh, man, I just want to see some Asians that aren't as an Asian person, I want to see some Asians that aren't hackers, femme fatales, martial artists. That's what I'd like to see. <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a uh, woman I follow on Twitter who is she had a rant that she said, "Why is it, it seems like every African American superhero has some kind of electric based power? Could you please stop?" And I was like, <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, "Wow, that is true. There's black lightning, there's static right. shock, you know, you go through listen like that is kind of weird. How mm-hmm. So, yeah, diversity, obviously, people want to see themselves. That's why Miles Morales' Spider-Man resonates with so many people, because mm-hmm. we have a non-white Spider-Man for yeah. the first time. So, very cool. And, yeah, comic books, as we mentioned, are a reflection of pop culture as well as the changing times. So, yeah. it's good to see uh, Marvel definitely stepping in and making their teams more diverse and everything like that. We are overdue for a break. We are going to jump to that right now, and we'll be back. Talking with superheroines, etc. dot org. This is the Big Five Fifty KTRS, and we are back for our final segment. Right now, we are joined this evening by superheroines, etc. Thank you again to Carolyn and Fox for coming in tonight, taking your Saturday night to uh, be with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no problem. And before we wrap up, uh, we'll hit the bullet points for the Project Comic Con, which again you can check out their website, projectcomiccon.com. dot uh, com. Should be a lot of fun. It'll be here in the Westport area, right across 
the plaza from where we are broadcasting here at the Big 550. And uh, going to be awesome. Yeah, Fox will have some uh, bullet point details real quick to wrap things up. Yeah, so as you heard earlier, we are going to be having the screening of Wonder Women, documentary about Wonder Woman, and uh, kind of what was going on with society and women's rights at the time, featuring a talkback panel afterwards with Trina Robbins, who is actually in the film. Neat. Um, we are also going to be doing some panels, um, including creating safer geek spaces in which we talk about making the geek community feel like a very welcoming and nice place for everyone. As it should be. Uh, another one is going to be Achievement Unlocked! Exclamation <laughs> point, uh, Promoting and profiting from your passion, which is going to share how, if you have an idea for a business or something like that, you can kind of approach that in a realistic way and become rich and famous with it. <laughs> nice. Um, and another one we're going to do is Geek Feminism, um, which kind of just talks about feminism in the geek sphere and that we are not angry pitchfork people, <laughs> and kind of why, but why it's relevant. Um, and then we're having another called Cosplay Bombshells, in which we are going to talk about empowering yourself through cosplay um, and just different ways to approach it and feel really good about yourself. And then the most exciting thing, I think, is going to be the Cosplayers Fashion Show, in which we are going to have... A fashion show with cosplayers. <laughs> Very fun. That sounds like a lot of uh, a lot of fun. That'll be for charity too. You can uh, come by check out that. Even if you don't want to participate in the actual cosplay pageant itself, you can come check it out and donate some money to a very worthy cause. Superheroines, etc. There's a dot org. You can check them out there. And remember, two slots. Or, I'm sorry, three slots left for the screenwriting workshop coming up right. starting tomorrow. Superheroines, etc. dot org to get all the information on that as well. And yoga tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. So tell us park. Perfect. <laughs> Ladies, thank you once again. I really do appreciate you both coming in tonight and uh, talking with us. Thanks for thank having you. us. Thank you absolutely, so much. absolutely. And thank you once again also to BK on the Air, 1450 AM, 100.3 FM. That's WBHF in Atlanta. You can hear them on the TuneIn Live app every Saturday morning. That's it from us here at the Big 550 KTRS. Uh, enjoy the rest of your Saturday night and your weekend.